Let's make rigatoni pie covered in U.S. mozzarella cheese. Once your water is boiling, make sure to salt it heavily. Then add in your rigatoni and let it cook until under al dente. Now one tip when cutting onions, lay your cutting board on a wet kitchen towel. It'll prevent it from moving, but more importantly, the acid in onions that makes you cry is attracted to moisture. So instead of going into your eyes and making you cry, it'll go into the wet kitchen towel. We're gonna dump our pasta into a bowl, coat it with olive oil so that it doesn't stick together, along with some fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano. You may want to use a bigger bowl than I did and set this aside. I like to make the pasta first, that way I can use the same pan to make our sauce and have less dishes to wash. So we're going to cook our onions and garlic. Add our onions first. And this will take about five minutes. Add your garlic. It'll only take a minute for it to get nice and aromatic. You can either keep it with tomato sauce, but I like to have it with meat. I'm actually going to use Impossible, but you're welcome to use ground beef. We're gonna add eight ounces. You wanna break it up with your spoon. You could also use a mixture of ground beef and pork, and even add some Italian sausage into this. I just like using Impossible to help cut down on my meat consumption. Now add your favorite tomato sauce. And this is a bit of a cheat. So one thing I like about infusing impossible is that I find that the texture of it is a little bit softer than ground beef. So you don't have to simmer it for a long time in order to get it more soft and tender. If you are using ground beef, I recommend using canned tomatoes, whole tomatoes, crushing those, and letting the whole thing simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. That way the beef can break down in the tomato sauce. You can have a nice tender meat sauce. If you don't really care about the meat being super, super soft and tender, then you can go ahead and do this quick method of just dumping in your favorite tomato sauce and mixing it all together and cooking it for a few minutes until it's combined through. So you wanna use a springform pan, and what that is is a pan where the bottom comes out. That way you'll be able to reveal your rigatoni pie. If you don't have one of these, you can use a regular pan. It won't look as cool when you take it out. All right, so make sure you grease it with some olive oil. Go ahead and just use your fingers to do this because we're going to use our hands to assemble our rigatoni pie. All right, so start by layering a teeny bit of sauce on the bottom, just a thin layer of your meat sauce. And now we're going to assemble it by stacking our rigatoni in the pan. It takes a little extra work, but it's super satisfying to arrange all your rigatoni standing straight up, with the exception of if you have trypophobia. If you do, then just use a different shape of pasta and add it to your pan and cover it with your sauce. Otherwise, stand those rigatoni straight up and cover it with the meat sauce, using your spoon to push the meat into those tubes. And so now we have our assembled rigatoni pie. We're going to cover it with a ton of US mozzarella. You want to use the shredded mozzarella, that way it will melt easier. And you really want to lay it on thick. And make sure you get it into the edges. That's how you're going to get those crispy cheese edges, which we all love so much. And there we have it. Now, if you're using the oven, you want to preheat the oven while you're cooking your sauce. That way, it's nice and hot by the time you put your rigatoni pie in, but I'm going to speed things up again and just use my air fryer since an air fryer is just a high powered convection oven. Anything you can bake, you can air fry, so we're gonna air fry this baby. And look at that golden brown crust. It's so beautiful. And now, the moment of truth. Fresh grated Parmigiano, some chopped fresh basil, Shit. Oh, the cheese pull. Look at all those rigatoni. It's just so satisfying having it all standing up like that. What I love is that you can take your fork and stick it into your rigatoni 
and all of that. Look at that cheese. Oh yes. All right, now let's try it. So what's great about this, you can see that the meat sauce goes all the way into the bottom of the rigatoni. Since you kind of like use your spoon to push it into the sauce. Mm. Mm. It's so good. When the mozzarella gets golden brown like this and all bubbly, it just adds this extra layer of umami that is so delicious. I mean, look at that cheese, and then you have that rich meat sauce. Mozzarella is really just the perfect pairing with tomato sauce. Mm. So good. It's almost like a big ziti without the ricotta, and it's just an extra fun way to present it. It's really important to use a lot of sauce. You really want every rigatoni to be filled with sauce. It's just a better ratio of sauce to pasta. Let me know in the comments what other TikTok hacks I should try out. And if you like this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned for more recipes. See ya.